And then we come to the Niyamas. Niyamas, rules of life. What do you do in your life? How do you spend your time in your life? The first one is purity. In a broad sense, it means, for example, that sadhus in the morning, they will always completely clean their body take a bath somewhere in a river or a lake or whatever is nearby, clean their clothes, clean everything, start the day fresh. This is a simple thing. But purity also means many other things, like purity in language, not using uh, impure words. Now again, this sounds very moralistic, hmm? <laughs> because you can argue, well, you know, shit is really nothing different from something more uh, agreeable. So, why shouldn't you say shit? Or all these other words that are used, especially in America, they use many of these words. Well, the reason behind it is very simple. These words are not just, you know, said without effect. If you say them, then mentally you will get an image of them. So, if somebody says shit, that's the image you're going to get. And that image in your mind has certain impact, has an impact on your energetic body, even on your physical body. If your, you know, detection machinery would be good enough, you'd be able to detect certain biochemicals created within the body just by hearing that word. So by keeping away from that kind of words, you have a certain purification of uh, the, um, the mental body, physical body, and energetic body. <clears throat> Many kinds are there. I mean, there every, I mean, sauna, for example, uh, would also be under this group of things to do. No? Other, all kinds of things that you can do, like dieting uh, for purification, fasting for purification. Um, purification on, on all kinds of levels can be there. And the next is santosh. Santosh means contentment. To be content. Whatever happens. Does not yet mean to be happy whatever happens. There's a small but important difference. To be content is more easy. And very important. My other teacher used to say, Narmada Devi, Santosh is self-sufficiency. She says, contentment is self-sufficiency. When you are content, then, you know, you are all right in the sense of you don't need anything particular. No? So then a lot of desire goes if you just try to be content. No? Then the next one is tapas. Tapas means burning, literally it means burning. There you have or you find the hard exercises that are uh, associated so much with ascetics. Standing on one leg for a couple of years, sitting on glass, you know, pieces of glass or nails, sitting in the sun, in the Indian summer sun, surrounded by fire, with a pot of fire on your head and two pots of fire in your hands, things like that. They are tapas. Strengthening willpower is the main thing. And strengthening willpower is, of course, very important for the next stages. There is nothing that requires so much willpower as conquering your mind. Mind is, uh, compared to a tiger, so strong is mind. And most yogis, when they are pictured or painted, or many of the deities also, are sitting on a tiger uh, skin. No? You see here the head of the tiger. That means they have conquered mind. For that you need willpower. For that willpower you do exercise. Everybody can develop willpower. Only not everybody can, you know, stand on one leg for a whole day just by willpower the first time they try. That's not possible. 
it's like in sports, it's the same thing. You know, if you want to learn how to jump very high, you don't start with, you know, putting the bar on, on, on two meters, you know. Probably never going to be able to do that. You start on the level where you can do it, and there you jump over a few times, and then you put it a bit higher, and you jump over a few times. So this is what a, a sadhu student will learn. Gradually, you know, they become more strong, have more will power, uh, be able to uh, resist pain. This is a very good exercise, which you find in many cultures, like holding the hand over a flame, things, things like that, some no? simple starting, and then gradually building it up. My teacher certainly was not in favor of doing that too much, too far. But some of it, no, not bad, not bad. Because you can really push your boundaries a lot, if you want to. And so, why not try? <coughs> Another one is self-study. So here actually, Patanjali has integrated an element of jhana yoga in the niyamas. Self-study is quite clearly jhana yoga. To study yourself, to study the environment in which you live, to study your experience, the whole thing we've been doing this morning, also is something that should be done regularly. And the last one then is worship. Worship of the Divine. There, the subject of tomorrow, which is Bhakti Yoga, is also integrated here into the Niyamas by Patanjali, worship. And I won't go into the why and everything, because I'll be doing that tomorrow at, at, you know, at great length. Um, but still remarkable to see that a guy who is so technical like Patanjali, he's very technical, you know, he's very precise still puts there this element of worship. The possibility to surrender. The possibility to accept that you don't know everything. That you cannot do everything. That you are not a master of your own destiny. And you surrender. This is very important on the level of the ego. Because that is also what you will have to do deep in meditation. The most difficult part about letting the doer go is to letting go of control. How can you let go of control if you have no surrendering? If you have no belief that there is something above you, which is you, as we discussed before, but, you know, deep inside you, which will, you know, take over, which will care for you, which will guide you further. For that, you need a certain exercise also. So then, like for the yamas, also in niyama, there have been things added to it, like humility, generosity, making vows, and all these things. But again, for me, they are actually related to these other five, just, you know, expressions of it. Like vratta vows <coughs> are quite important. You can relate them to this tapas, this burning, this, you know, willpower exercise, but while uh, this is more meant in the sense of doing this exercise for maybe a day or a month or something, these vows are more for long term. And they are mostly used to deal with your addictions. Addictions are really hard to deal with. That's why they are addictions. You know, somehow or other through your life, you became very dependent, like me, on cigarette smoking, <laughs> or, you know, other things. Dare to make vows that you will no more smoke cigarettes, or no more do this, or no more eat sugar, or uh, never sleep more than that, you know, than that much time, or, you know, things like that also are part of, uh, of what the sadhu has to do, mostly to deal with addiction. <clears throat> One other there which is interesting is called Jap. Jap means continuous prayer. Even if you are not in meditation, 
even if you're just washing dishes or walking or whatever, continuously trying to have a certain prayer going on.